got a sea laminin. I'm like, okay, let's see it. He said, no, 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 you need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I'm like, I don't even know how to spell laminin. <laughs> Takes his card out, he writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminin, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like, wow, that's laminin? The cell adhesion molecule. Woo! <laughs> I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. <laughs> you should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now, okay? This is what I found right here. No, come on, that's crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy. I'm, I just can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast, I'm like, wow, 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 what in the world? He said, you want to see an actual laminin molecule? I'm like, oh, no, man. The diagram was cool for me. I'm happy with that. Don't, don't bother sending anything else. I'm like, yes! And he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. I'm like, how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul in Colossians 1. You know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. He says, for by him, talking about Jesus Christ, all things have been created, things in heaven and things on earth. All things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. But then the next verse goes on to say this. It's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things. And in him, that is, in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. It's right, it's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. Everything holds together in Jesus Christ. And he goes on at the end of this paragraph, and he just tells the story of grace. He says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. So you're at the toughest place in your life. How can you know that God is going to hold you together and bring you through. You know because there is a cross standing over history and it is looming over this building tonight. It is the place where the star breather became the sin bearer. Where the universe maker became mankind's savior. And it is proof that God doesn't always change the circumstances. He did not change them for Jesus on that hillside outside Jerusalem. But the cross is also proof that God always has a purpose in the circumstances and that his purpose and his plan will prevail and will triumph through any circumstances in this world. So we just close with this question. It's found right in the middle of an interesting chapter in Isaiah 40 where it just talks about the expanse of God. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain. 
like a tent to dwell in. He leads forth the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. But then it takes a turn. And the writer of Isaiah says, so why do you say, O Jacob? And why do you complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. Or say, my cause is disregarded by my God. In other words, there was a moment in the history of Israel when they felt like God had completely lost sight of them. That yes, I believe that God is big enough to make the world. I even believe that God ordained and made me. And now coming present tense, I'll accept the fact that God gave his son on a cross. But what I really need to know right now, what really matters most to me right now is does God see what I'm going through? Does he see what I'm carrying? Does he know that I can't take one more step or one more day? Does he care and can he do something? That's what I need to know. And Isaiah answers and he answers with another question. And it's a question for us here. He says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He's huge. He is a star breather. He's big. But listen to what he loves to do. That God, that creator of the ends of the earth, that I do not grow tired or weary, that my understanding is too great for you, that God, here's what he does. He gives strength to the weary. And he increases the power of the weak. For even the youths will grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, another translation, those who wait upon the Lord. The Hebrew word simply means this when it says hope and wait. It means but those who stand right in the midst of the craziness, right in the midst of the pain, right in the midst of the chaos, right in the valley of the shadow of death, and they don't gloss over it. They're dealing with the hardest stuff in life, but standing in the middle of it, they say, you know what? I don't see what God's doing. I don't understand what the plan is, but I'll tell you one thing. I am not going to give up on God, and I'm going to stand right here in the middle of this moment, and I'm going to trust that God is sitting on a throne that he has a purpose for my life and a plan for my life and I believe I'm going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living and I'm not going to stop believing that no matter what that's what the word means to wait and to hope on the Lord and he said and here's the promise you're going to wake up to rosy circumstances no no Oh, he can do that and he does do that. But the promise is greater than that. He said, those who wait upon the Lord, here's what I promise. I will renew your strength. And when you think you can't take one more breath, I'll give you enough to keep going on. And enough to keep going on. And enough to keep going on and to keep going, and to keep going, and to keep going. You keep hoping, and I'll keep causing strength to rise when you hope, and you'll keep going, and you'll feel like you have been swept up on the wings of eagles, and you will run and not get weary, and walk through it all, and not faint. He said, I will hold you, even when you let go of me, I'm not going to let go of you. Do you know there are millions and millions and millions of microscopic crosses holding you together right now? And one giant glorious cross of Jesus Christ that's holding every one of us that's trusted in him on to the heavenly father and holding the heavenly father on to us and it's going to keep holding us on to him that cross forever and ever and ever and ever we will never not be carried by the strong hand of a universe making God and he will bring us through that is the promise of the everlasting God